The latest news on space weather, the forecast for space weather tells us that we have a solar storm to hit Earth today. Space weather forecasters anticipating solar storm hitting us today, which could spark northern lights. The hole has opened up in the atmosphere of the sun, allowing for a stream of solar winds to be released, and space weather forecasters predicting this to hit us today and for the following day, which could leave auroras in the upper echelons of the northern hemisphere. The particles are making their way across 150 million kilometers or 93 million mile journey from the sun to our earth where they're expected to arrive today. And cosmic forecasting site Space Weather said a minor stream of solar wind expecting to buffet Earth's magnetic field, gaseous material flowing from a small hole in the sun's atmosphere and geomagnetic unrest could spark polar auroras. Auroras include northern lights, which are the aurora borealis, and also the southern lights, aurora australis, caused when solar particles hit the Earth's atmosphere. And as the magnetosphere gets bombarded by solar winds, we have stunning blue lights appearing as a layer of atmosphere deflects these particles. Not just blue lights, it actually it looks like a, a shivering rainbow above our heads. Now, researchers also noted the consequences of a solar storm and space weather can extend beyond northern and southern lights. And for most part, Earth's magnetic field protects humans from radiation coming from such solar flares and sunspots. But solar storms can affect satellite-based technology as well. Solar winds can heat the Earth's at outer atmosphere, causing it to expand. And this affects satellites in orbit, potentially leading to downing or lack of GPS navigation, mobile phone signals, and satellite TV. Now, additionally, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere that can lead to higher than normal electricity and power lines, resulting in electrical transformers and power stations losing power. Rarely does that happen, though, with the biggest technology crippling solar storm that came in 1859 when a surge in electricity during what's now known as the Carrington event was so strong that telegraph systems went down across Europe. There's also reports that some buildings were set on fire as a result of the electrical surge at the time. But recent study found that these solar storms should happen every 25 years on average, meaning we're well overdue. Now, these are going at uh, solar wind is now at 374.4 kilometers per second. Density 0.2 protons per square centimeter. And uh, the area of the solar wind flowing from the southern coronal hole of the sun to graze Earth, uh, well, not only today, but also May 22nd and 23rd. And I'll leave a link uh, for space weather. You can see that coronal hole towards the south hemisphere of the sun. Researchers from University of Warwick and British Antarctic Survey analyzed the last 14 solar cycles dating back 150 years. They show that severe magnetic storms occurred in 42 out of the last 150 years, and great superstorms occurred in six years out of 150. Researchers said that if it had hit Earth, it could have downed technology on our planet. The lead author, Professor Sandra Chapman from University of Work Center for Fusion Space and Astrophysics says, these superstorms are rare events, but estimating their chance of occurrence is an important part of planning the level of mitigation needed to protect critical national infrastructure. This research proposes a new method to approach historic data to provide a better picture of a chance of occurrence of superstorms and what superstorm activity we are likely to see in our future, despite um, Sean Martin Express UK and also Space Weather. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel.
Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.